Hello and welcome back. In episode 14, we're going to continue with um, animating and moving Axon. Uh, I forgot to post a GitHub commit at the end of my last video, so we're just going to post one here. Um, this is season 1, episode 14, commit 1. In our last episode, we moved Axon toward the player. Commit. And I, I highly recommend using GitHub. It's a fantastic way to save checkpoints into your game. Just for your own sake, because you never know when you're accidentally going to break something. So that finished syncing. Alright. So, we have some basic movement. Um... Let's go ahead and program the attack. So we're calling this stop function as soon as we get within range of the player. Let's just go ahead and create another function called attack. And we're just going to print the word attacking. And we can call that here. The character won't move um, as long as we're not within this block. So we don't really have to worry about stopping the character. So for now, I'm actually just going to completely delete that method. So now if we hit play, he should run toward us, and now you can see, let's try that again, um, if, if you watch the, lo the logs, as soon as he gets within range of us, he starts attacking. Yep. Alright, so now we, we just have to animate that. Uh, we're going to need a reference to the animator, so we can create a private animator and call this axon animator. And you can name that whatever you want, but um, for consistency, it, it might help if you copy whatever whatever variables I create. Um, now we n we need to grab a reference to that because our script, like, even though our script and the animator are both on the same object, um, these two scripts don't necessarily know about each other off the bat. So so to get a reference to the animator within our start function. Uh, just create axon animator equals get component animator. And that's just going to find whatever animator script is on our object and save it. So now within attack, um, we're going to say axon animator. And then there's lots of different variables exposed to us. And Unity has actually been working to give us more control over the animator. Um, so some of these methods I'm actually a little bit unfamiliar with. But I think I'm just going to use the set float or the set bool methods. So se. Yeah, let's just do set bool. All right. And that's going to expect a name and a value. So for now, um, until we define what that is, comment this out. Now go back to Unity. And click on Axon's controller. If you double click that, it'll open up. And now um, we, we can expose variables within the animator and then modify those with our code. So we have a transition from creature one spawn to creature one run. And then at that point, he's just running all the time. Oh, shoot. I guess we do actually need that stop method um, to turn off his running animation. Because now, when we play, he's just sprinting no matter what. Even though he has actually stopped, he's still sprinting. So we need to fix that. Um, 
But then again, I guess we could just go straight into the attack animation. So I think I'll do that. So within our animator, <clears throat> sorry about that, we're going to create a parameter. So click on the plus and then click on bool. And I'm just going to name mine attacking. Keep it simple. And then um, a, a boolean is just a true or false variable. It's it's just a it's just a variable that can only have two values, yes or no, true or false. And by default, we'll set it to false. And so um, the creature spawns. He automatically goes into his running animation after two seconds. And then we want to create another state where he's in attack mode. We have a few different to choose from. <laughs> uh, I personally like this one the best, so I'm going to drag that one in. But feel free to use whichever one you want. And then we're going to create a transition. So now he runs, and then as soon as the run clip ends, he goes into attack mode. And you'll see that's not exactly what we want, because he's going to run, and then he's just going to start attacking. And that doesn't look right. So the reason for that is because in our animator, um, the condition to change between one state to the other, it's just depending on exit time. And we, we need to add more conditions. So let's go ahead and hit plus. And attacking is the only condition that we set up, so it automatically th threw that in. And so now we're only going to transition if the first clip is finished and the attacking variable is set to true. And so now we haven't set that yet, so he's just going to stay in running mode. And now within our code, um, we have this X on animator set bool, and we're going to set the value of attacking to true. Attacking true. And so now when he gets within range, we call this attack method, and then we set that variable, and then he should just automatically go into attack mode. And it worked. But now you can see he's stuck in attack mode, which is not what we want. Um, so a, an easy fix for that is back in this movement function. Uh, whenever we're moving, let's just set attacking to false. We don't want to move and attack at the same time. All right, so he runs toward us, he starts attacking, and for some reason he's still stuck in attack mode. So I, m I messed something up. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's an easy fix. So we got stuck in attack mode because there's no transition back to, to the running mode. Um, and we might as well add a condition for that, attacking false. So we're running, attack mode gets set to true, we go into attack mode, attack mode gets set to false, and we transition back. Looks awesome. I, I don't like how he sort of stays running, even after he, he kind of runs into us. And the reason for that is because the running animation kind of takes a while to finish. Um, there's a few different ways we can try to fix that. Uh, axon animator dot set. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually just make make the stopping distance a little bit greater. Stopping distance, let's make that more like 4.5. And, 
and then uh, we we'll go back into the animator. And in the transition from run to attack, let's make that transition even a little bit longer. So so th this is going to be like less running at the end and more of the attack. Well, that looks terrible. <laughs> okay, so un undo the change in the animation. Well, let's see how that looks. A lot of this is just trial and error. So now he's stopping too early. Set that back to 4. Okay, so I think we can actually just drag this back. Drag the whole transition back to the start of the running animation. Let's see how that looks. That seems to be a little bit better. Maybe not. I mean, sometimes it looks fine, and then sometimes it looks really horrible. One more tweak. Seems like it depends on how far into his animation he is when he hits us. That seems okay, actually. Yeah, that, that's better. Alright, so to fix that, I just mo moved the transition closer to the start and shrink it. Alright, that'll be fine. Um, and now we can also tweak the animation for when he goes back into running. Make that a little bit longer. So he goes into his attack animation pretty abruptly, um, but, but when he goes back to running, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, and I, I, I'm happy with that for now. Uh, you'll notice he just ran through that tree. Uh, let's go ahead and give him a collider. I'm just going to give him a capsule collider and give that... Uh, and then I'm also going to give him a rigid body and make it kinematic. Kinematic means um, he determines his own physics for physics forces. He can't be knocked down by the environment. And that way he shouldn't run into the tree. Oh, he still did. Let's, let's see what his box collider is set to. Or capsule collider. Scene, view. Oh yeah, so the capsule is like in the floor. So we need to move that up by like 2, or 1, height 2, okay, move that up by 1.5, 3, radius of 1, and that's better. So 
So I think that'll prevent him from going through the tree. He should at least, like, bounce off it, sort of. Oh, maybe not. Oh, huh. uh, it's because I said it had been a kinematic. Yeah, now, now he bounces off it. I'm a little bit worried that he can get knocked over now. Uh... Oh, I guess not because um, the the lookout function that we're using is going to set him to the to a, the correct orientation every frame, and so now we can run into him and we actually bounce off. Uh, he runs into the environment. I'm really happy with the way the in, the environment looks. Actually, it's pretty satisfying to run around. All right, so that's better. So now we have. Sorry, this video is taking so long. But now we have a correctly moving character. He can't dam damage us, but it looks cool when he's attacking. Uh, so I'm going to cut this video off here.